guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. Last week, I shared a video, and in the beginning of it was a, a sort of musical montage of me making some homemade bread from scratch. And towards the end of it, I kind of touched on a little bit of information about it. I've received so many questions about making the bread. Um, from the wheat and my mill and everything that I decided to bring you into the homestead kitchen and I'm going to talk about some of the things that I was asked and just share a little bit more information about it as I make some homemade bread today. So I'm going to grab an apron and we'll get started. So the wheat that I get comes from bread beckers. Now this huge bucket of vacuum sealed wheat is extremely heavy and so shipping on something like this would be just astronomical. Bread Wreckers has a co-op program where three times a year they will do bulk orders and deliver to different areas all around um, generally the southeast although they do have a place up in northern Indiana I think it's like Fort Wayne and then there's a place up in Massachusetts and ordering through that co-op saves a fortune on the shipping cost and so that is who I get my wheat through they they have all sorts of things for baking for uh, preserving food uh, you can get tons of stuff from them and you can order all of these through their co-op you can also order from them directly on their website but again you're going to be paying for your shipping so if you're ordering something heavy like this wheat um, it, you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. If you have access to uh, a co-op area anywhere near you, it's totally worth it, uh, even if you have to drive a little ways um, to, to order it that way. I will put a link to their website and their co-op information in the show notes underneath this video. Now, the kind of wheat that I use is called hard white, and hard white wheat is generally for bread baking. They also sell soft white wheat. It's a wheat that you would use to make things like cookies. But the hard white has a nice, light, mild flavor. They also sell a hard red, which has a much heavier, wheatier, nuttier flavor. Um, I have used that in the past, but I much prefer the hard white. This is just my favorite wheat to use. And so that's what I use. So the next question I get asked about is what kind of mill do I have? This particular grain mill is called the Family Grain Mill and I have had this thing since like 2006. I have the electric motor right here that runs the mill because this portion right here is actually the grain mill. It also has a non-electric hand crank that you can purchase. Uh, you could purchase it with one or the other or with both if you wanted to. I do actually own the hand crank and when my kids were younger I used to have them hand crank it uh, for fun and for burning up energy. <laughs> um, but I, like I said I do have it just because I think it's something prudent to have because you never know. Now with all of the craziness in the world right now uh, a lot of mills are sold out or they are on back order. Uh, this particular mill I know is on back order I think until August 2020 at the time of this filming. Now I ordered this one through Pleasant Hill Grain. I know that Lehman's also has um, grain mills and they have one that's almost identical to this that's got really good, good reviews. Now if you have never used freshly ground wheat uh, and, and freshly ground flour like this, it's a little bit more coarse than you're going to be used to. And so one of the ways you can kind of adapt to getting used to uh, the texture is by using like say half the fresh ground wheat and half traditional store-bought bread flour. And, and gradually as you make your bread, gradually reduce the store-bought flour and add more of the freshly ground flour. That'll help you get used to the texture and it might make it a little more palatable for family members who are used to that spongy, uh, textureless <laughs> store-bought bread. Just saying. So there really is no mystery when it comes to milling your own wheat. You literally pour the wheat in the top, 
turn this on, whole wheat flour comes out the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. This is loud, so I'm not going to try and talk over it while it's milling. pause this to say when you are doing this this has a tendency to throw up a little bit of dust and I am actually right under a ceiling vent so when that kicks on I've got a breeze happening so to make sure I don't have flour dust all over my counter I just cover this with a tea towel and it keeps the dust and the flour all inside the bowl All right, so I've got right about six and a half cups of flour here. Now this is freshly ground wheat, as you as you know. This is not going to be the same as store-bought whole wheat flour. Store-bought whole wheat flour is much more dry, so you cannot make this recipe with straight store-bought whole wheat flour. If you do, you are going to have bricks instead of loaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here. I'm going to add in two eggs. Four and a half teaspoons of yeast, which is one and a half tablespoon. And I just kind of eyeball this. Next, I've got a half a cup of honey. Three tablespoons of oil. Now, generally I'll use extra virgin olive oil. I've also used avocado oil if I ran out of extra virgin olive oil. Um, either one is fine. A tablespoon of sea salt. All right, and then finally we have two cups plus two tablespoons of warm water. And this shouldn't be hot, it should just be comfortably warm. And ideally, you would want to use unchlorinated water if at all possible, uh, just because chlorine kills bacteria and is, you know, not conducive to life, and you don't want to kill your yeast. And that is all of the ingredients. So now I'm going to put my lid on the mixer. And this has a dough hook, of course. And I'm going to turn this on low speed and I'm going to let it go for 14 minutes. Now, as this is going, I'm going to keep an eye on the dough. I want to make sure it isn't too sticky, it's not gooey. And if I need to add a little additional flour to it uh, to make it into a soft dough as opposed to a sticky mess, then I'll just add in a little bit at a time, like maybe a tablespoon or two. Watch, see how it's doing. If it needs a little bit more, add a little bit more. You wanna do it very slowly because you want just enough flour in there that your dough is soft, but not a sticky mess.
Alrighty, so the dough is done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna cover this up and I'm gonna take my bowl and I'm gonna set this in a warm location. Now, if your oven has a traditional light bulb in there, when you turn on your oven light, it creates a gently warm environment. It's the perfect spot for setting your dough to allow it to rise. And you're gonna let it rise until it's about double in size. And that can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. I generally set a timer for about 45 minutes myself. And really it depends a lot on the temperature in your home and things like that. So I'm gonna set this in its warm spot and let it rise. Now something else I've been asked is Bosch mixer versus KitchenAid mixer. And I actually had both, I have both actually. Uh, I have the six quart artisan KitchenAid and basically the reason I choose to use this one for making my bread as opposed to the KitchenAid is power. It takes a lot of work to knead bread dough, especially when you're doing it for long periods of time like I am to make this bread. And I don't feel that the KitchenAid holds up. Uh, I have a long story that I can go into uh, and maybe I'll film that another day, but I've, I've gone back and forth between KitchenAid and Bosch and when it comes to making bread, Bosch is my go-to. It's just, it's a stronger mixer. I have actually made eight loaves of bread at once using this mixer and it and it didn't slow it down at all it wasn't like it was it took no effort so that is why i prefer to use this mixer now when i do my bread baking i do still have some store-bought organic unbleached bread flour in the house and i don't use much of it generally i keep it on hand for dusting the loaf and the counter when i'm forming the loaves and working with the dough and when I mill my wheat, as I'm going through, if I didn't quite mill enough, uh, I might add a little bit of this to make up the difference. So I do still use a little bit of store-bought flour, but not a whole lot. I would say 99.999% of the flour that goes into my bread is that freshly milled uh, flour. So I'm going to let my dough do its first rise. And I'm going to head out into the garden, get a little bit of stuff done out there, and then I will come back in for the next step. Alrighty, so my bread dough has been in here rising. And I'm going to look at that, look at what a difference that is. So I'm going to sprinkle the counter with a little bit of flour so that my dough doesn't stick. This is the heavy duty hook that is in this Bosch mixer. And then this is a little attachment that goes on underneath it. That, and then this little hook here actually goes underneath it and it slides around the shaft of the bowl to keep anything from sticking to it. about doing any quick kneading right now because the process of rolling this dough out into the loaves will uh, take down any excess air bubbles or anything like that. 
So I'm just going to form the dough into kind of like a big ball here. I'm going to cut it in half. Cut that in half. Grab some pans. loaf pans that I have here are made by Norpro. I've had them for years. Now I'm going to pat out the dough into sort of an oblong shape. I'm going to roll it up. Tuck the ends underneath and just set it in a loaf pan. And I'm going to do that with all four of them. And what this does is it allows the dough to have sort of a uniform shape because if I just cut uh, the dough into four sections and just plopped them in the pan, it may not rise evenly. And so this makes it uh, much more uniform, like I said. And the flour that I dusted this with is just regular store-bought flour, uh, bread flour. It's organic, unbleached, all that. And so the vast majority of the flour that is going into this bread is, of course, the fresh milled wheat. I just use this flour for, as you see, coating the, the countertop. And then when I mill my wheat, if I'm like say the tiniest bit short on how much flour I need, I'll just throw in a little bit of this to make up the difference. You don't have to do that. Um, I mean, you can mill a little extra wheat, of course, but usually I've already put my mill away when I get to that point. And so this just makes it easy. All right. So there we go. Four loaves prepped in the, prepped in the pans. And I'm going to take these four loaves, I'm going to set them back in my warm spot, cover them with a tea towel, and let them rise until they are double in size, about an hour or so. And I'm going to head back out into the garden while this is doing its thing. Alright, so I'm back in the house. My bread has finished rising, as you can see here. So now, let me grab a little dish. I'm just going to top my bread loaves with a little brushing of milk. And the reason I do this is it lets your um, crust be nice and soft because this is it's basically going to be like sandwich bread and so I want a nice soft crust and brushing milk on the tops of the loaves helps accomplish that. Now like I said in the past I used to do a lot of bread baking and over the years I learned to troubleshoot uh, when there was issues with bread loaves and it not turning out the way you expect it to. I have an article on cosmopolitancornbread.com that is a troubleshooting guide. It takes you through different problems that you may have when you are doing yeast breads and what generally uh, causes them. And so if you've ever um, baked yeast bread and maybe had it not turn out the right way, then I would recommend checking out that article not to toot my own horn, but I think it's got some pretty good information in there that you may find helpful. So now these are going to go into the oven. I'm going to bake them at 350 for about 18 minutes or so, and then they'll be ready. All right, you guys, so that is how you make my honey wheat bread from whole grain freshly milled wheat. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. And of course, I have a printable version of this recipe that you can print out, stick it in your folder, you can save it to Pinterest, however you like to save your recipes. That is on my blog, cosmopolitancornbread.com, and I will put a link to that down below or up in a card if you are watching this on YouTube. So if you hear crunching in the background, the dogs have decided now is the perfect opportunity to sit down and eat their dinner. So if you are new to my channel, you're just finding your way here, my name is Constance. I am a writer, a blogger, a YouTuber, a homesteader, and here on the YouTube channel I do at least three videos a week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. And over on my blog, cosmopolitancornbread.com, you can find over 600 recipes, everything from roast beef to Nutella bread pudding. You can find tutorials on how to use a steam canner or how to build a cattle panel structure. So there is a huge library of articles and recipes that you can browse through over there. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I would love for you to subscribe and join us here at the homestead. Thanks for coming along and baking some bread with me here in the kitchen today. Again, my name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread, and I'll talk to y'all next time.